Joining me on out to talk about it all, Governor Bob McDonald, Republican of Virginia, and Governor Deval Patrick, Democrat of Massachusetts. Welcome to both of you. Good morning. Nice to, well, there's a lot to talk about on the political landscape right now. Governor Patrick, let me start with you. The president seems to be against the wall here as he begins this campaign for re-election. A top advisor, uh, David Axelrod, now outside the White House, but he was his communications advisor, uh, gave a speech in Manchester, New Hampshire on Tuesday. This is what he said the stakes are. We have the wind in our face because the American people have the wind in uh, their faces. Uh, and so this is going to be a titanic uh, struggle. But I firmly believe we're on uh, the right side uh, of the struggle. A titanic struggle. So what's the president have? What does he have as a message? Has he found his voice to overcome that struggle? Well, first of all, I think it's, uh, it's important to point out the president is not taking this election for granted, and candidates shouldn't. I hope Democrats are nervous. I think uh, that that's more consistent with how people are feeling in the general population. And I think the question is, do we want a government that is on the side of helping people help themselves, or do we want a philosophy, which the National Republican Party has been pu pushing anyway, which says that everybody's on his or her own? I think at the end of the day, the American people are going to choose a partnership with leadership in the, in the form of President Obama, which is about helping people help themselves. And the jobs bill is, uh, is just the most recent and I think very important. What is he doing, though? Is this a base strategy? Is that where you think the president finds his you know, voice? You, you might be asking the wrong person because I don't do all the strategies and all that stuff. I think the president is about trying to make sure that every American, regardless of party, those who see themselves as Democrats or Republicans or, or uh, don't see themselves as aligned at all, understand that he is on their side and with this jobs bill, he can help. We can help. Governor McDonald, rhetoric matters. And the president is in a new phase in terms of how he takes on Republicans. Earlier last month, he sat down with our own Brian Williams. And when it came to responding to Republicans, this is what he had to say. I'm not going to start reacting to uh, uh, Republican rhetoric uh, in a presidential campaign. Uh, let, let them decide who it is that is going to be their standard bearer. And uh, we'll have more than the ample time to, to have a debate with them. He was at 35,000 feet, now he's down at the tree line, right? Uh, this is what he said just this past week at a fundraiser out west. The president saying, I mean, has anybody been watching the debates lately? You've got a governor, he's talking about Perry here, whose state is on fire denying climate change. He's engaging Republicans. He's calling them out by name. He must like the comparison. Well, all eyes, of course, are on the Republicans. There's no competition on the Democratic side. Let's, not for now. There may be, if uh, <laughs> don't things don't get a little bit better. <laughs> But look, this election is about three things, and the Democrats are on the wrong side of it. It's about uh, jobs and economic development, sustained 31 months over 8%. percent president promised to so get us under 8. We're at 9.1 now. It's about uh, spending and debts and deficit. We're at $14 trillion with the approval of the debt limit increase. It's going to be over 16, the greatest increase in the national debt in history and it's about leadership it's about uh, who what party believes in the american dream and american exceptionalism and i think we're uh, getting ba but back a, in a period of malaise like jimmy carter that's that's not what's going to all win right it we're going to talk about the economy in just a moment but as a comparison do you worry as a sitting governor as chair of the governor's association that the national republican party is fielding candidates who will ultimately have to be too extreme and will lose the opportunity to retake the political center, which is how presidential campaigns are won. No, because they're talking about jobs, spending, leadership, energy. They're talking about the kitchen table issues that people really care about. And so after this inner squad scrimmage is done over the next six, seven, eight months, of course there will be people beating each other up a little bit. But Republicans have a great desire to win, and they will rally around the candidate big time this Let, year. Let's talk about jobs. And for both of you, I want to point out a Wall Street Journal survey that was done from the Business Roundtable about hiring. I'll put it up on the screen. Top business executives are less confident now about the U.S. economic outlook and their ability to hire new workers than in previous quarters this year. Only 36% of CEOs thought their company's U.S. employment would increase in the next six months. 24% thought it would increase, or it would decrease rather, and that's according to a survey of uh, 140 CEOs done by the Business Roundtable. This goes on to point out that in the second quarter, the numbers were different. 51% thought they'd be hiring more. Only 11% thought it would decrease. Um, the outlook is bleaker. What can and what should government do? Well, let me just say that in, at home in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we're growing jobs faster than 44 other states. 
our unemployment rate is well below the national average as it is in Virginia and going and going down. And we've moved up with Chase in Virginia, which is first <laughs> in the nation in uh, as best places to do business. We've moved up to fifth or sixth uh, at this point. That's because we have a strategy. And it's a strategy about investing in education, in innovation, and in infrastructure. And frankly, that's exactly what the president's been talking about at the national level. That's what the stimulus bill has been about, and that's what the jobs bill uh, uh, accelerates. So I don't think that uh, simply... You know, this notion of, uh, that you hear sometimes from national Republicans of, uh, of cutting spending, shrinking government, crushing union, unions, and waiting is a strategy that's going to get us anywhere. What we have to be about is a wise partnership, public and private, investing in our future. All right, but as a governor, Matthew, I mean, what, are this, what are the consequences of inaction? Because the reality is the president's campaigning for a jobs bill. The outlook is not very strong. So what, is, what are the consequences for doing you know nothing what, David, at the federal level? David, if I just say, I, I think the, the consequences are dire, uh, and I think they reflect terribly on the folks who say uh, no to whatever the president puts, uh, puts forward. You know, we, in both of our respective states, if I may say, uh, of, uh, of Governor McDonald, we have worked in partnership with people who differ from us politically because we understand that people look to us to help, not to solve every problem in everybody's life, but to help people help themselves. And we are all looking to the federal government that way. I think the president has shown over and over and over again, sometimes to the dismay of his supporters, <laughs> that he's willing to reach across the You, you hear side. Governor McDonald from the president's advisors that the Republicans nationally have been diabolically successful in blaming all dysfunction in the government on the president and basically saying no to effectively everything. What are the consequences of inaction by the federal government to do something to jumpstart hiring? Well, I don't buy that argument in the first place. I think that's a lack of leadership. Uh, Duvall's right. When you're a governor, you got to balance budgets, get stuff done on time. You can't make excuses. You're held directly responsible uh, for outcomes in your state. We can't do what the president's doing, which is blaming the House, the Tea Party, calling the American people soft. I'd say we need stronger leadership. That's what's, uh, that's what's uh, wrong. And so I think what you've got here is uh, an administration that's very much uh, anti-business. Look, look at this week. The president of Coke saying it's easier to do business in China than it is in America. The president of Google saying that all this regulation from Washington is stifling innovation. Uh, I don't think this is the right approach to be able to recapture the American dream. We ought to be more positive about what a great nation we've got. And I, I don't hear that from this White House. I completely agree about the importance of being positive, And I think this president's patriotism is beyond, and enthusiasm about Absolutely. this country is beyond, uh, is beyond question. I think that we've been asking uh, the president to fix the economy with one hand tied behind his back. We've been saying, uh, in effect, um, make it so the government has no role in regulating excesses on Wall Street, in, uh, in trying to assure that uh, multiple bottom lines that government is responsible for are adequately balanced, and that you should, uh, you should make investments, but, not, um, but we aren't going to give you any funds to do so. But the problem, I think we did, the we did I think regulate Wall Street. Look at Dodd-Frank, who was passed uh, on the president's watch, and now you've got... You got CEOs around the country saying that's one of the things that's killing our ability to invest. That's why there's capital and let jobs me, on the sidelines. Let me, let me, let me well, jump in and talk about um, health care. We're not going to have this fight. The Supreme Court is likely to look at this now in the, in the heat of the campaign year. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Governor, you've been forceful in saying that you, you want to sue the federal government over this. You don't want this to become the law. Already done the law. You've already done that. Excuse me. Um, what's going to happen here? What's the impact of this look going to be? Well, it's hard to say. The Virginia case, of course, we got bumped out on standing, so we're appealing to the United States Supreme Court, in fact, just this week, uh, on standing. Uh, the Florida case will probably be the likely one, I think, of all that will get, uh, get to the Supreme Court on the merits. And the fundamental question is, can the United States Congress force an individual in a state to buy a product or, or a good, and if not, to get, get fined? Uh, so regardless of what you think about health care, and I know they've got a in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. all the merits, which the states can do. This is about whether the federal government can make an individual do it. I think there's broad agreement in the country that we need more access at less mm -hmm. cost, but doing it through this one-size-fits-all federal mandate from Washington is not the way to go, and that's why the majority of the American people are against it, and why it's going to be a big uh, campaign well, issue. Of course, you know, the, the, we've, the, uh, the national reform is based on what we've been doing in Massachusetts for the last five years, and 98% of our residents have health insurance. It's added 1%. Uh, to uh, state spending. It's been a wild success. There is a challenge everywhere in the country in terms of managing health care costs down. And that's regardless whether you have a universal system or, uh, uh, or not. We're going to crack that code in Massachusetts uh, as well. I think that, frankly, uh, to describe this, uh, due respect to my friend Bob, to describe this as a mandate for one-size-fits-all is wrong. There is so much flexibility 
under this uh, proposal to try different ways of accomplishing the same goal. And the goal is recognizing that health is a public good. Let me come back to politics now, and I want to ask you about your fellow Governor Chris Christie up in yes. New Jersey. So he was out at the Reagan Library this week. He, he quoted then-Senator Obama, the 2004 campaign, where he talked about one America and used that against him, really, in his criticism. This is what Governor Christie said this week. Well, now, seven years later, President Obama prepares to divide our nation to achieve re-election. This is not a leadership style. This is a re-election strategy. Telling those who are scared and struggling that the only way their lives can get better is to diminish the success of others. Insisting that we must tax and take and demonize those who have already achieved the American dream. That may turn out to be a good re-election strategy, Mr. President, but it is a demoralizing message for America. Would you like to see him get in the race? Do you think he will? It's hard. I'm going to leave that up to Chris Christie. He's an extraordinary communicator. He's a great governor. Uh, enormous reforms and uh, everything from the pension system to budget reform in a blue uh, blue state. I just asked him to be vice chairman of the Republican Governors Association because he's such a, a terrific leader. Uh, I just think whoever's going to get in needs to do it immediately. We've got 90 days till the uh, caucuses start in, in Iowa. I think Chris is probably feeling that pressure to make a decision uh, uh, immediately. I think that says a lot about the fact that there's optimism about winning in 2012 and there are people Or does like it say this. that there's there's an opening in the field because there's concerns no, about who's at the top of the field. I, I don't think so. I think there's nine people on that stage in the debates that, uh, that are great people, and they're going to get better, uh, better over time. But Chris is a, is a unique, successful governor with a positive outlook and I think would fare very well against the president. But ultimately, the call is his. I'd be surprised at this point if he got in. You would be surprised. I would. Just because of the calendar? The calendar and because he said for a year he's not. But, right. I, I, it, would, you know, he's got a lot of people who are well-respected in Republican circles will think he'd be the, the right guy. I have great respect Would for Would he be formidable, Governor Patrick? Sure. I like Chris. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's one of my favorites. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I wish him well. Not that well. Did but, you hear that uh, endorsement? Uh, no, that's not what that was. <laughs> but I, look, you know, he's been governor for, what is it, a year and a half, uh, yeah. uh, two years. I think unemployment in New Jersey is higher even than the, uh, than the national average. There's some unfinished work in New Jersey. Uh, in order to have proof points for the case he wants to make. I think the point is that the president is not uh, leaving the outcome of this election up to pundits, pollsters, or some view of what the current or future field will be in the Republican uh, Party. It's about getting out and appealing to people where they live, where they are, where they feel, and making sure that they understand well, he's trying to do what he can to help them out. Himself. A quick one for each of you before you go. Governor McDonald, immigration, your state, as you well know, has a, has a big increase, almost 19% since yes. 2008, of Hispanic voters who are now voting age. This was a state that the president carried. If you look at the party's stance, a harsh stance on immigration reform, do you see him recarrying carrying Virginia again based in part on the reaction among Hispanic voters around the country to Republicans on immigration? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, I think uh, the president's uh, way underwater. Last poll, 39% approval rating. I carried the state by 18. Three new congressmen elected uh, last year. I don't see it happening. I, I do think that uh, Hispanic voters, while they lean towards the Democratic Party, are largely self-identified as conservatives. I think we got a great chance to reach them because our message on job creation, economic development, restoration of the American dream is exactly why people come here in the first place, uh, because we are this shining city on the hill. And uh, that's going to be our message over the next 14 months. Governor Patrick, uh, as you well know, the most important personnel decision in your state this morning is not about the presidency. It is about this man, Terry Francona, who's now out <laughs> as manager of the Boston Red Sox. This is a man who reversed the curse, yes. two world championships, how do, you, how do you lose this guy even after this colossal oh, collapse of the Red Sox? I have my hands uh, full just trying to run the uh, You want to go back to the political questions, right? Because those are easier. Those are, those are, those are hard enough. Listen, I, I, uh, yeah. I love this team. I love its management. I love the players. And the fans are unbeatable. And, uh, and that's why we have Springs. Wow. I mean, that, we got more from him on, on the president than that. <laughs> Governor McDonald, would you get names back on track? <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> Governor, would you consider being a VP candidate? On the Republican side? You know, that's nine months away. That's somebody else's decision. I'm having a great time uh, cheering the RGA. But you'd be open to it? Well, look, if somebody called and said you could help our country, help our ticket, I think any of us would, so would, would think about it. Right now, I'm focused on making Virginia more competitive than Massachusetts and making it a great state. All right. Governors, thank you both. Thank you. The Thanks debate continues. We appreciate it.